What's the crack lads? Welcome back to another player pack review. Today we're going to take a look at the Epic Spain 2010 pack. We've got David Villa, Cassius and Puyol. So this is a fairly good uh, a good pack lads. I mean there's a good trio of guys in here but with the mix of 150 players I think you're going to have to be very lucky to get any of these boys. I mean obviously David Villa is the prize possession here because of his B form and the fact that he has got um, 37 levels to go. And he's a very unique kind of player, which will show you how I'm going to train him up in just a couple of minutes. But yeah, the rest of them, I mean, Puyol, one of the best players as well that I have on my squad. Cassius, I don't have Cassius on this profile. Uh, we've never spun for him, but his stats look absolutely incredible. Is he a Danaruma beater? We will see in the stats in a second. So kicking us off with Cassius. I mean, this guy, man, has got everything you could possibly want from a keeper, except low punt kick out, which is a key um i know people like long throw as well i prefer to have both i prefer to have a keeper that can do the low punt because it just kind of keeps your opponent on their toes you know obviously the long throw is going to be extremely important i've seen a lot of people talk about that but to be honest with you if you play you know possession based football like me you're going to be passing small and passing short a lot of the time anyway so it's not really a big issue but what is a big issue with cassius's card is his standard form this is something that I don't think any of these players should have standard form, lads. I mean, especially if you're spinning for them and potentially spending 150 coins worth to get who you want to get. I think all these players should be just that step above. I will be doing a video on the player ratings and stuff in quite a, a, a bit. But yeah, we will have it up before the new year, hopefully, or maybe tomorrow. But Cassius' stats, obviously, when you train him up, then you're taking a look. This is how I would train him up. 97 overall. We're going to put 9 into goalkeeper 1. Goalkeeper 2 gets 8. And goalkeeper 3 stat train and progression points get 8 as well. And that leaves us with 1, which we can pop in to aerial strength, which gives us 1 on to jump as well. That's a key little tip there. But yeah, look at the stats here that you're going to be getting, lads, with Cassius. Absolutely insane. Apart from his form, um, you're going to have one of the best keepers in the game here. Obviously, he's not the tallest, so you need to develop the, the reach a little bit more than you would with a taller keeper. If a keeper is taller than 190 centimeters, you don't need to worry about the goalkeeper reach as much, right? You just need to focus on reflexes and you need to focus on awareness. But because Cassius is that little bit shorter... You might find yourself conceding from corners and conceding from set pieces a little bit more against tall defenders um, or tall attackers based on this if you don't have the goalkeeper reach. Don't worry about clearing or catching. That's not really going to be a big issue. But yeah, I think that you're going to have that. Like 90 goalkeeper awareness, you're going to have uh, 90 goalkeeper reach and you're going to have 94 reflexes. Absolutely insane. There's only a couple of goalkeepers that have better stats than Cassius or equal stats to Cassius. It just depends on preference then. I still think Donnarumma is the main man for me because he's just such a colossus in the goals. So it is dependent on it. I know people uh, swear by Cassius as well that he is an absolute monster. And looking at those stats, it's hard to see uh, or it's hard to argue against it. Next up, we've got Puyol. Puyol is one of my favorite players, lads. I usually, I usually call him Puyol um, or Powell. But yeah, I mean, Puyol is one of my favorite players in the game. He's he's probably played about maybe 150 matches with my club now, uh, with the dream team squad that I have my my main one, and I usually play him as a as a center back or else a right back. He's just excellent, man. He he plays way above his stats as well. That's the thing I like about him is that like you do need to focus a little bit on his speed. I've trained him up in a very different way than the max progression way, um, which I think is the way you should be training. If you want to improve at the game, if you want to actually get better at the game and learn what works and learn what works on the pitch, more importantly, you need to take a look at what you need from each player. You know, there's no point having a player that's 80, you know, nine overall when you could have him at 85 with better stats for that position or 98 overall instead of having him at a, you know, 92. Like it just depends on how you train him. So you look again at um, Puyol's stats there. You've got interception and blocker. I'm still going to do the video on that because it's the most important when you are looking for center backs. But even though his height is a little bit small for a CB, he's still got the heading player skill. He's got acrobatic clearance, sliding tackle, fighting spirit. He's got literally every stat you could possibly want. Obviously, he's not going to be able to pass or dribble that much. So he's more of kind of like a brute force center back is what I call him. Is that when he gets the ball, he's just hoofing it. But he can still play a little bit. You're not going to be running up the wing with him. like. But you can still play a little bit with him. You know, he's not going to be a build-up type player. He is a destroyer, as you see there. 
and this is how we train him. He has that unwavering form as well. This is how I'm going to train him, right? So you can get him up to a really high overall, right? With the boost as well, you can nearly get him up to 100. But to me, lads, this is the best version of him if you're looking for just the best center back version of him. So we're going to pump in 10 into lower body strength to get that, that speed and stamina up. That is a big factor with this card. We're going to pump 8 into dexterity to get his acceleration up to 77 while keeping his offensive awareness at 64. And then the balance is going to be 75. That's perfect. And then we're going to have 2 into aerial strength just to use up the rest of the progression points we have. And the big one is going to be 12 into defense uh, stats, right? Into defending. So from there, right? I always say, and this is kind of a, a good rule of thumb to think about when you're thinking about center backs. If you are new to the game and you've missed a couple of my videos where I talk about the stats and all the importance of it, go back and have a look at them. I'm still starting out my playlist. But the big important thing is when, you look, when you're looking at defense, right, is defensive awareness. If that's over 90, okay, you don't need to worry too much about speed and acceleration, okay? If, if it's under 90, you need to have your speed and acceleration, especially acceleration above 80. So that's kind of the trade-off. So we could achieve that um, with this guy if we want to. Like, we could keep that at 90 there. And then if you want to, if you're the type of player that likes to be a little bit more aggressive and have a little bit more control, you could put that up and you're at 79. So you're kind of... You're kind of just giving up a little bit of defense capabilities for that added acceleration and that added balance, right? I personally think that that is the best way of doing it, is having that, that at 92. It also raises up his aggression. Aggression is an extremely important stat when you are not controlling the AI. So if you're controlling, say, if you've got Puyol and Van Dyke as your center back partnership and you're controlling Van Dyke, um, and you call, you know, for a secondary press, or you want the AI to actually do something, you know, the, the aggressive, uh, the aggression is a key stat in that. Defensive engagement and tackling also key as well, especially with the AI and how they control it. And then he's got 80 header, well, 79 header, uh, 84 jump, and with the rest of the player skills, it's a phenomenal card. And then last but not least, we have got David Villa, right? Villa was one of my favorite players, Les, when I used to watch him back in his Valencia days, and he went to Barca. He's got unwavering form. He's got excellent player skills. Uh, you might worry about his low pass and his lofted pass. They're very, very low there, and you might need to upgrade them a small bit uh, because he doesn't have any player skills. But to be honest, lads, if you are using David Villa as a center forward, you need to be using him the same way as you would Mbappe, Romario, Romanegi, Torres, any of those boys. It's literally turn and run and gun. That's what I call it. So you're basically going to be the final line of attack with Villa, you know, you're going to be rolling the defenders, if you know how to roll a defender, um, which is quite easy, uh, once you know how to do it, you can absolutely dominate, you know, with little one-twos, and it doesn't matter what his low pass accuracy, or low pass attack, uh, or stat is, like it could be 40, and you'll still be able to do the one-touch pass, and then roll off the shoulder, so you don't need to waste too much points on that, but the rest of his stats then, he's got excellent dribbling stats, even though his dribbling, or excellent dribbling player skills, even though his dribbling stats aren't that high, He's got really good shooting stats, as you would imagine from him, because he's got really good finishing. Um, and then when we're training him up, we're going to train him up slightly different to get a 96 overall. But that B form with unwavering form is going to be really, really, really key for this card. So we are going to pump nine into his shooting to bring it up to 90. We're going to put seven into dribbling to bring his dribbling up past 80. And then we're going to have 14 into dexterity to get his acceleration up as big as we possibly can not only for acceleration, but also for balance and offensive awareness. And then the rest is going to go into lower body strength, nine into that to get his speed and stamina above 80. That's kind of where we want it to be. That also brings up our ball control to 86, our offensive awareness to 95, kicking power to 88, finishing at 90. This is an insane center forward, lads. I mean, you should be banging him in with David Villa. He definitely is a really interesting, unique center forward to have because he's not a complete speed freak. He doesn't have, you know, speed 90, acceleration 90, uh, like Mbappe, but he does have some very, very nice animations and nice shooting as well. And to be honest with you, I always like a, I always like a player that's able to have a bit of, you know, curl in his finishing as well, that's able to kind of curl shots past the keeper. It's a very OP. Um, if you're not doing it, you need to kind of learn how to do it. Uh, it's very, very easy just to keep a little bit more composed when you're in front of goal and slot it into the corner. The keepers can't really save it. So that is it for me, lads, for another pack review. I'll be back quite soon with some more Dream Team Chronicles and a couple of more videos as we see out 2022. It's been an incredible year so far for me on YouTube and massive appreciation to all of you guys that are supporting. Definitely the best community on YouTube. 
But yeah, until next time, lads, I will talk to you later. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, peace.